What's up guys, Rox is back and today I will be reviewing another movie. Uh, that's not how you start videos, oh my gosh. What's up guys, Rox is back and today I will be reviewing the Split movie 2017 because you, you just can't go without saying Split 2017. It, it, just, it just makes sense. Um, first thing I'd like to address is that this is, in fact, a different setup from what I, uh, usually do. Believe me, this makes me more uncomfortable than it makes you, even though I'm literally, like, less than a foot away from my desk, which is where I normally make these videos. So this is because, um, I'm just... Well, first of all, the lighting was weird in my room, and the laptop was, like, picking up on the weird lighting, because, ah, now I'm blind. Because uh, the lights in my room are really bright, and the laptop camera just, like, picks it up really big, just, I don't know what I'm saying, man. Also, because my condenser microphone is just, like, not cooperating when I want to, when I want to record, uh, videos on my laptop, so, I'm just gonna try this for once and see how it works and uh, if it's good it's good but I would like to start using my condenser microphone for uh, these locks talks and other videos of that nature before we start a spoiler warning is in effect for those of you who haven't seen split so you might want to click off like now or if you haven't seen any just don't care then stay or something I don't know do whatever you want but there's spoilers alright so let's get into the movie um, Split 2017, it, like, I, I, I don't really know how to describe it, it was like, I mean, I've wanted to watch it ever since it was, like, advertised in trailers and stuff, but, like, I never got around to it until yesterday, which is, uh, Sunday, yesterday was Sunday, uh, at the time of me recording this, but, like, so it was on TV, and I was like, hey, I wanna watch this movie, let's watch it, I've been wanting to watch it, so let's go. And oh my gosh, I was not disappointed. It was like actually a really good movie. Hey, look, listen, I'm not the horror movie type of person. You know, yeah, I like my superhero movies action. And like, this really isn't my type of movie, but I actually thoroughly enjoyed it. It was really good. And I like, I was very happy that I made the decision to watch Split 2017. So yeah. All right, so let's get into the pros and cons of the movie. Um, it's basically all pros, uh, I'm not gonna get into all of them, cause then we'd be here all night, but, um, like, there's only a few cons that I'll talk about later. So first pro right off the bat is the acting. It was really good. I know James McAvoy, Mc McAvoy, I don't know. I always knew James McAvoy could, like, carry himself as an actor, but his performance is split. I'm sorry, his, his, uh, several different performances, cause, like, there were many. They were all just... They're rock solid, little no flaws at all. Now it does beg the question if personalities are in fact their own separate characters, but I'll get into that later. Of course we can't forget about all the other people that were in the film, there were quite a few. I mean Dr. Fletcher, she was really good, very emotional performance uh, she was delivering. And then like the three girls that were kidnapped, they were solid too, they were really good. However, there is one part of their performance that I did not enjoy, and I will get to that in the cons later. And now on to the next pro, the storytelling is really, really good. I mean, the the plot of the movie is really solid. It, like, well, it's not solid. It flows very nicely. You can follow it pretty easily. It's only a little weird when, like, you cut to the flashbacks randomly. But um, even then, those are, like, still... <laughs> I can't speak. Those are just there to, like, um... Give, a, give us a little backstory on Casey and, like, why she is the way she is. And uh, that's really why the flashbacks were there. They just they just added to the plot. The last part I want to talk about in uh, Split, it has to do with the ending. Uh, I'm not going to, like, talk about the whole ending because, like, it's, it's a really good ending. But I'm just going to focus in on this last bit here right before the credits. Alright, so my dumb self thought that what the ending meant was that... Kevin had evolved as a human being so much that he could actually change his physical appearance. And, uh, it's not that far from the truth. He could- he actually could. I mean, you see him as the beast. He got way big. And he, like, his veins were bulging. And, uh, he could climb up walls. So my- my, um, stupid brain- it's not stupid, but, like, we're just gonna call it stupid for the moment. 
thought that what the ending meant was that Kevin had evolved so much as a human being that he could actually alter his physical appearance. And so he turned into Bruce Willis. That's what I thought the ending meant. And, um, I had to go and Google it because I knew that couldn't be right. But, like, um, I just thought that's what the ending meant. And I feel really dumb about it because, like, I don't think they'd go that far as to give him a whole different face and whole different actor. But, like, yeah, that's what it was. So we're in a diner, and we see the lady on TV is talking about how, uh, Kevin escaped, and he has, like, several different personalities. They call him the Horde. And, uh, the last of his personalities is the Beast, which is very scary. It's like Spider-Man, but, uh, very weird and creepy. Then the lady sitting at the counter, one of the ladies, actually, there's a few, she says that, like, 15 years ago, there was another guy that they put away. He sat in a wheelchair, and then she asks what his name was, and the guy next to her says it was Mr. Glass. Now this guy, this is David Dunn, played by Bruce Willis, and um, this entire last bit, segment of uh, the movie, it's a reference, I use reference in quotes because it's uh, it's kind of a reference, not really, to um, M. Night Shyamalan, I don't know his name, I don't know how to say his name. <laughs> it's a reference to his other movie, Unbreakable, which came out in 2000, I believe. The plot goes a little like this. David Dunn, played by Bruce Willis, discovers that he has superpowers after he, um, he, like, survives a train crash and he's the only survivor. And there's a villain called Mr. Glass. He's played by Samuel L. Jackson. And uh, that's about all I know about the movie. I actually haven't seen it. But I kind of want to now after seeing Split. What this ending basically means is that David Dunn is going to come out of his retirement as a superhero. And, um, he's going to track down this Kevin, Kevin guy. And, like, take him on in an epic battle of hero versus kind of villain, monster. He's not technically a monster, but he might as well be. And if you look at the description of, of the director's next project, it's called Glass. It's exactly that. It's like a sequel to both of the movies. David Dunn comes back to fight Kevin and his several personalities. And honestly, I'm really excited for the sequel. Because, like, after seeing Split and seeing what, like, the director is capable of, and, um, I kind of want to watch Unbreakable 2, but, like, I'm really excited for the sequel. I want to see what happens to Kevin and what happens to Bruce Willis. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited for the sequel. I really want to know what happens. Luckily, it comes out fairly soon, just next January, so it's not that bad. Alright, so we wrapped up talking about the pros. I mean, there's probably a lot more that I didn't get to in this video, but, like, I want to get to the cons. There were very few. There was only, like, two really big ones, and those are the ones I'm going to talk about. The first con is, um, it has to do with the girls. Now, um, the actresses that play the girls, um, they were really good. I mean, they took what they had, and they just ran with it, and it came out great. It was excellent. Now, uh, the problem... This has to do with the writing, the screenwriting part of it. But, like, it's not too bad. It's just a little distracting. Um, so two of the girls... who boy, how do I put this? They just... They just behave as high school girls are expected to in horror movies. Okay? They didn't use rational thinking. They just made horrible decisions all around. I mean, Casey, she was different. So, of course, she had a little bit of logic in her brain. They just acted like stereotypical high school girls in a horror movie by making bad decisions and just not rationally thinking at all. And like, I guess it's not that, um, I guess he didn't have that many options in that situation because like, one of the girls had to be the one to survive and escape and do whatever. But, like, still, at least write them a little better than just stereotypical high school girls in a horror movie. I mean, to be fair, that might be how high school girls actually act in a situation like that. But, I mean, come on. And I'm not blasting the director for his, like, writing decision. No, not at all. It's just, like... I don't know, it just bothers me a little bit that they act like, like, they're stereotypes, high school girls in a horror movie. Jeez, that's like the third or fourth time I've said that. Alright, you know what, you get what I'm saying, moving on. The second con, 
And um, this one actually bothers me a lot. It has to do with the car scene. So right after Dennis, we're gonna call him Dennis because that's who he is. He gets into the car, he just like sits there for a while, and then the girls realize that he is not, in fact, their the father. So then he sprays them and they they go away. They they just fall asleep. Alright, but here's the thing. Casey always knew something was up. As soon as she discovered that he wasn't, in fact, the father, she knew like something was wrong. And like, what bothers me is that right after he knocks out the other girls, um, she just like puts her hand on the car door and opens it just enough so that it makes a noise, but not enough so that she can bolt out of the vicinity. Casey, are you stupid? Run! Open the car door, not just a tad, but the whole way, and bolt! You do not Wanna be in the same car with that same guy who just knocked out your friends, acquaintances, I don't know. To be fair, Dennis seemed a lot more physically fit than Claire, and he probably would have caught up to her if she had decided to run. But still, you would have bought yourself some time if you ran. Why are you running? Why are you running? Why are you running? More like, why aren't you running? Maybe you would've find a nice family that would like, tell that guy to go away. But, or maybe you would've just run into a big crowd where it would've been really suspicious if some guy was taking a girl. Either way, what should've happened? We probably could've avoided the whole movie if she just ran. Now, um, to look at the flip side of it, if she did run and somehow she escaped from Dennis, even though he's like more physically fit than her, he would have caught up. She still doesn't know where Dennis is taking the other two girls. And I mean, yeah, that's a little bit of a problem, but you know what? She actually like got a good look at Dennis. She knows what he looks like. He's a bald guy, kind of pale, wears glasses, or doesn't, I don't know. She could have gone to the police, first of all. Second of all, she could have given them a description of what Dennis looked like. And I mean, it's not like Dennis was trying to hide. I mean, when he turned into Barry, he was just going out in public, going to work, going to Dr. Fletcher's office. It's not like he would have been hard to catch, he was just going out in public. Bald guy kind of pale really sticks out, you know. Wouldn't have been that hard to catch if he, she had just escaped and gotten to the police and told them what he looks like. So, uh, yeah, we probably could have avoided a good half an hour, full hour of the movie if she had just done that. But hey, it's a horror movie. I know characters aren't supposed to make the best decisions. Now, on to Dennis and how he acted in that situation. Do you not see the teenage girl sitting in the seat next to you? How do you not notice that? It's kind of obvious when a full-size human being is to your right. Right? Like, and, and here's what ticks me off even more. We could just, we could just like brush that aside, say he was distracted. He, he wasn't focusing. He didn't notice her. But like, here's the other thing. He literally turned in her direction and then back to spray the other girls. How didn't he see her? Like, I actually don't understand. And then what makes it even better? As soon as she opens the car door without bolting for some reason, he like stares at her for a good 10, 20 seconds and then sprays her. Like, why didn't you notice her at first? And also, why did you waste time like actually knocking her out. She could have run in those 10 to 20 seconds that you were taking to stare at her. Like, Dennis, you're supposed to be like the guardian protector of Kevin and his personality. What are you doing, man? All right, that wraps up the pros and cons of this video. Um, I'm just gonna like give some of my final thoughts about the movie. It honestly really blew me away. Like, I was so shocked with how good it is. It might be the only thing I talk about for the next week, but um, yeah, it was just a really good movie. I really like how um, 
the director carried it out. And um, as far as I know, uh, M. Night S, M. Night S, whatever his name is, I can't pronounce it. He's had like a fall from grace recently. His movies haven't been that great. I can't speak from experience. I haven't seen any of them. Or I haven't seen most of them. But like, I mean, I feel like Split is a really much needed revival to his career. Because like, Split was, I mean, I know I'm repeating this a lot, but Split was really good. I'm not even exaggerating. It was, it was great. I really liked it, and I'm not a horror movie type of person, and yet I loved it. It was a really good movie. Now back to Kevin for a moment. So we know that he has, like, split personalities, obviously. And, like, his split personalities are basically almost completely different from one another. Which begs the question, are different personalities, in fact, different characters in a movie? I'd say yes, because, like, let's take a look at, like, a uh, think about Austin Powers. You had uh, Mike Myers play Austin Powers, the protagonist, and then Dr. Evil, the villain. And he also played, I might be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure he played Fat Bastard in one of the sequels. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure he did. It's not all the same character, even though they're played by the same actor. Similarly, while Kevin was experiencing having different personalities, and they all were a part of Kevin, they're like all in his mind, um, technically, and... They did all look exactly the same, because it's just the same person. But like, their personalities, each of the individual personalities, they were so different from one another. And even though they were played by the same actor and were technically the same character, they were just so different from each other, they could have actually been considered different characters altogether. Thank you guys for watching, let me know if you agree or disagree with the points I brought up. Uh, if you like this video, leave a like. If you really liked it, then subscribe. If you really want to be mean, then dislike it. Actually, don't, please. Or do. I don't know. I, I don't control you. And uh, if you want to see more of these, as well as other various meme-type videos, then subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.